Welcome to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him at God's Five Minutes at gmail.com. Now, here's Ed Wilson with God's Five Minutes. Hello, friends. Psalm 81, verses 6 through 9 read, I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were delivered from the pots. Thou callest in trouble, and I delivered thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee at the waters of Meribah, Selah. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. There shall no strange god be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange god. These words are a reference to the painful final years the Israelite nation spent beneath the Egyptian rod, what had begun over 200 years before as an amicable relationship between Joseph's brothers and the mighty Pharaoh who ruled that broad land had gradually deteriorated into the inevitable condition of Israelite slavery with all the abuses that so relentlessly accompany that horrid condition. Hands that once tended their own flocks were now whipped and beaten into the hardest and most unrewarding work, apparently building structures meant to house and advance religions wildly alien to the God of Abraham and his descendants. Cruel slavery has been a common enough system in the world's history. Practically every nation in the time of the, of the psalmist had a slave population. If we look through the records of the past, we find very few instances in which slaves were able to free themselves as a group. Well, for instance, the Zanj revolt in Iraq lasted about 15 years before their former masters massed large armies against them, extinguished the sparks of resistance. Or there were the Mamluks who started as slave soldiers and eventually, through long years, fought and schemed their way to power and some measure of freedom. Mostly, though, slaves who just lived and died lives of hardship and oppression. Those who did manage some level of liberty did so only by marching over fields of fallen comrades. The Israelites are the exception. Although their misery was apparently as great as any slaves have ever been, there are no signs in their known history of a massive movement in their midst to defy the Egyptian chariots for a land and a nation of their own. They are perhaps the only enslaved people in the history of the world to be delivered en masse by a providential intervention. God, through the psalmist, reminded them of this fact, and doing so spoke to us all. For Egyptian bondage is used in the Bible as a metaphor for being imprisoned in the bondage of a sinful life. Just as the Israelite drudges went to the same unrewarding, dirty, hard work every day, so those who live empty, sinful lives fill every day with scrubbing unrewarding floors in the devil's dungeons, trying to find a few scraps of comfort in the hard, unyielding corners of shame and darkness. The good news is, God doesn't love you and me any less than he did those people oh so long ago. He put his hand on their shoulder to take on his mighty arm the heavy loads of brick and straw. Or he sent his man Moses to bless his people, to rise up by signs and wonders against Pharaoh's heavy hand, by means that could not be resisted, by the Nile turning to blood, by an invasion of frogs and lice and flies, by livestock dying by boils and hail and fire. He announced to the Egyptian magistrates their dominance over Israel was over. Friend, if your life is oppressed by Satan's bondage, God wants to do the same kind of miracles to deliver you. Thou callest in trouble, the poet wrote. There's a key. We're all as powerless to deliver ourselves as any of those old people were. The answer is not in counseling in different environments alone. The answer is in calling out to God. Ask him for a new heart. Ask him to wash your sins away in his blood. He wants to answer in the secret place of thunder where he speaks to your spirit by your own individual experience of free salvation. His requirement is not that you toil mightily to fight your opponent. It is that you put away strange gods. Be willing to give up the sinful ways. Plead for his mercy, and he will lead you into your own personal land of Canaan. Oh, have you talked to him today? You have been listening to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him by email at g-o-d-s-f-i-v-e minutes at gmail.com. Tune in next time to hear more encouraging thoughts from God's Word on God's 5 Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson.
Hi, I'm Sue Taylor, and I host the Faith to Live By podcast, available from the Sky High Podcast Network. Are you looking for a little spiritual pick-me-up as you begin your day? Each weekday morning, I have a short devotional thought to get you going and give you something to reflect on as you go about your day. Faith is not just something you need when you get saved. Faith is something you live by. Look up Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe today.